And I think the big thing here you have is a big disconnect between the economy and the market, right? The, we know the news is bad. There's no secret. Uh, you just mentioned the news in Germany, talk about unemployment right now. But what we forget is the market is forward looking and the market's trading on forward fundamentals. And you know, if you look at any economist's projections right now, when you look out to Q3, Q4, I mean, we should see a pretty significant rebound in the economy. And I think the market's telling you that things are going to be a little bit better next year. And that's why you're starting to see things trade up right now. All right. We need a little good news on a Friday, but we also don't want to be Pollyanna. What are you looking at that tells you that things are getting better, Ryan? Well, I mean, just like we talked about fuel demand, you just talked about oil prices. And if you look, I mean, I just drove from the Jersey Shore back to New York City, and I've seen more cars on the road than I've seen in weeks. So you're starting to see fuel demand go up. Um, you're starting to look at when you go to the airport now and look at screenings, they're starting to go up. So the economy is starting to slowly mobilize. Uh, the other thing I would talk about here too, Brian, is when I look at bull markets, they're fueled by two things, lots of liquidity and lots of pessimism. And if you look at pessimism right now among investors, it's actually higher than it was at the end of March. So people now are more pessimistic than they were then. And that was way more into the uh, belly of the beast, so to speak. And you saw about a trillion dollars come out of the stock market. You're seeing with $4.7 trillion now sitting in cash. You have all these investors waiting for that next leg in the market to drop. And my thoughts are you're not going to get it because you have too much money now that has to get into the market. And, you know, you get any sort of dip here. And we've seen that. You know, any dip that we've seen here has been bought. Uh, you're going to have a lot of pressure to buy here. And I think that could push the markets a lot higher from here. Well, th that's what's weird. I mean, you talked about the trillion. We reported that, you know, that, that fund flows have been into cash, a trillion dollars. You know, all these hedge fund managers, Stanley Druckenmiller, David Tepper, have come on this network and said stocks are overvalued. We don't like equities. It makes you wonder who out there is doing the buying? Is it just Algos, Renaissance Technology, and Citadel? I mean, if everybody's in cash, why have stocks held up as well as they have? Well, you probably got some institutional buying initially, right, that pushed things up. And now, you know, for the most part, depending on the market, you've been a little more sideways here in the short term. So, you know, my thoughts are you have a lot of smart money that's already gotten invested. And I think you have a lot more money that's going to get forced to get in. And also, I just look at it like generationally. I mean, we deal with a lot of baby boomers. And this is the first time I'm hearing baby boomers, ones that are sitting in cash, realizing you're not going to get to your retirement goals at a 0.6% return on a treasury, right? I mean, you're not getting yield anywhere else. And even millennials, which have a tremendous amount of cash right now, uh, we work a lot of millennials, are realizing, hey, this is an opportunity. I need to get invested right now. So I think you're going to have a whole new generation getting invested, which didn't really invest the last decade, the millennials. Yeah. And you have baby boomers that were scarred the last financial crisis that are realizing they have to get invested. So it's just like there's so many catalysts right now to be a buyer of stocks, and you have too many people looking for this down leg that I just don't think they're going to get.